Hey, I'm Nick Nimmin, and I'm gonna share with you nine hidden YouTube features that you don't know exist, and we're starting right now. First, you know that For You section that YouTube just went ahead and added to your YouTube channel page where it recommends content to people as they're coming in? They put videos in there, they put shorts in there, they put live streams in there, they just kind of throw everything into that. But if you want to turn it off or you just want more control over what goes into that section, here's what you do. Go into your YouTube studio, click on the customization option on the left menu. Under your video spotlight area, you're gonna see For You. You can turn it on or off here, or click into More Settings. Here, you can choose what you feature. After it's all set, click Done, and you're good to go. And really quick, if you don't have a computer and you do everything on your phone, all you have to do is turn your browser into desktop mode. I'll put a link to a video that shows you how to do that in the description, and I'll go ahead and put it at the top of the screen for you too. Next is your blocked words list. Now with this one, some content creators know about it, a lot of new content creators don't, but if people say things in your comment section that bother you, what you can do is you can add those words to this list and then YouTube will automatically hide them from public view. To get into this one, make sure that you are in your creator studio again. Then click on the settings icon in the bottom left of your screen. In the box that pops up, click community. Then scroll to the bottom of the screen where it says blocked words. Put any words that you don't want showing up in your comments here and they'll be hidden. And while you're there, make sure to check this box right here to block links from being put in your comments as well. For this next one, you know when you upload a YouTube video, you have to copy and paste stuff into your video description or you have to write things over and over and over again for every video that you publish. You gotta set your category every time, your monetization settings and everything. Not anymore. Let me show you. In this same area that we were just in, click on Upload Defaults. Here, you can fill out everything it is that you need. That includes the visibility of your videos, title information, video description information, like affiliate links or links to other videos or product links and tags. If you click on the advanced or monetization settings, you can also get all of that set so you don't have to waste time doing it with every video you publish. In my opinion, TubeBuddy's upload defaults and TubeSpanner's upload assistant is a lot better at this because you can set a bunch of different descriptions for different things. I'll put links to both of them in the video description so you can check them out, but if you just wanna go the easy route, you can just do it it right here on YouTube. Now, this next one is pretty new at the time of the recording of this video, so you may or may not have ever heard of this before. It's called Audience Segments, and it's in your audience retention reports. And if you don't know what that is, if you're new to YouTube, your audience retention reports are a second-by-second -second report of how people are responding to your videos on average. What this feature does is it lets you know how different types of viewers respond to your videos, which can give you deeper insights. Just click this drop-down on Audience Segments, and then you can choose what type of viewer you want to look into. Subscribed versus non-subscribed, new versus returning viewers. These things can be really nuanced, but also really insightful. As part of this area, if you want to know if your videos are good compared to other videos of similar length on YouTube, you can just click on the audience retention dropdown and change it to compared to other videos. On the right, you'll see a guide for high, average, and low. The blue line tells you how you're doing. If you're on the low end, it means you need to stay focused on making the content better. If you're above average, it means you're being competitive. And keep in mind, just like all of your other stats on YouTube, the more people you have interacting with your content, the harder it is to maintain those higher numbers. So just remember that. Now I'm sharing this next one because I was on a live stream and I mentioned this and people were like, oh my gosh, where do I find this? It's simply a stat that shows you how many subscribers you've lost over time and how many subscribers you've gained over time. And don't get me wrong, this isn't how many subscribers you currently have, it's how many you've accumulated or lost over the entirety of your YouTube experience. To get to this, simply go into your YouTube analytics again, click advanced mode in the top right-hand side of the screen, then click the plus icon over by the video titles, then click subscribers lost. You can change the date range from the last 28 days to lifetime up in the top right-hand corner, and then you'll see how many subscribers have left. And yeah, you're seeing that correctly. I've lost over 400,000 subscribers on my channel since I started, which would bring my total to more than 1.3 million. But you know, who's counting? I mean, I'm only getting super close to getting a gold play button if I can just make sure that public view count hits a million. So if you're not subscribed yet and you're enjoying this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and help me get there. For this next one, if you share your videos out to Facebook or Discord or Reddit or really anywhere off of YouTube, and you wanna see if those shares are a complete waste of your time or not, here's what you do. Go into your YouTube analytics for the video that you shared, go into advanced mode like we did before up in the top right-hand corner, which as I'm sure you've noticed, you can figure out a lot of things in this area. Then click on traffic sources, scroll down the page and look for external. Click it 
and then you'll see the different ways people have come to your content from outside of YouTube. What you wanna look for here is to see if your shares are effective in average view duration. You can also click on the plus icon and add average percentage viewed. If you find from looking at these numbers that people are sticking around from those places that you're sharing, then it's a good place to share. However, if you find out that they're not, well, you should probably stop sharing there because it's not doing any good. It's just wasting your time. I have a friend of mine that is a really good YouTube coach and he didn't know that this next feature that I'm getting ready to share with you, he didn't know it was there. So I figured I would share it with you just in case you don't know either. So here we go. If you're somebody that uploads podcasts to YouTube, they have their own self-contained stats. If you have a podcast with your channel, you can see the combined stats of your podcast on YouTube by clicking into the content tab, then click on podcasts, then click on the analytics icon. Once you do that, you're going to see the stats isolated for your podcast. These are full function statistics. So if you wanna see any of the things that we talked about already in this video, but for your podcast, you can do that here as well by clicking into advanced mode. Okay, so you're gonna love this next one. You know how when you share something in your community feed, you're kind of like, hey, I don't even really know how many people are seeing this because I got eight likes and I didn't get any comments, but I, I, I would love to know at least how many people saw this. Well, you can see that and I'm gonna show you how. Go into your analytics again, then go into advanced mode. Then on the far right-hand side of the screen, you'll see more with a down arrow. Click that and choose post. Now you can see how many people have seen your post over whatever time period you choose, which helps add clarity on the effectiveness of this feature. And just to be clear, just in case you don't know, an impression on YouTube is when YouTube shows it to somebody on the platform. So when you see impressions, that is equal to the people that have seen that post. For example, you can see that I've only gotten a little over 5,000 likes on my post in the last year, but over 600,000 people have actually seen them. I guess I should make an image of some kind to post in there to remind people to subscribe to my channel because that's a lot of people. And maybe you should too. For this next hidden feature, I gotta be upfront with you. It's complicated. And the way that we get to it and how you set it all up, it's gonna take a nice handful of steps. However, if you go through the steps I'm getting ready to show you, and then you think of how you can apply this to your channel and what it is that you're trying to figure out about your channel in terms of how people are responding to what, then this feature by itself can be just a total game changer for what it is that you're doing on YouTube. It's called the grouping feature, and this is how you get to it. Again, you'll wanna be in the creator studio for this, then click on analytics, then click on advanced mode at the top right of the screen. We've been in this area before. Then click compare to in the top right of the screen. If you look at the third tab, you're going to see groups. To make a new group, just click create new group. Now really quick, before we move on, I wanna give you some ideas on how you can use this. You can create groups of videos that are five to 10 minutes long and videos that are 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 minutes long. And you can compare those against each other to see which ones people respond to better across a bunch of different metrics. You can use this feature to compare across a bunch of different videos where you ask people to subscribe to your channel in two different ways and see which one seems to be the most effective for the people that you're reaching. You can use it for your thumbnails if you're doing anything where you have consistency across groups of thumbnails where you can say, hey, these thumbnails are all my face on the left. These thumbnails are all my face on the right. I wonder which ones people seem to respond to more. But you can get creative with this and use it in a lot of different ways. Now let's get back to showing you how to actually get to everything. Once your groups are created, you can delete them at any time by hovering over the group name and then clicking the trash can icon. To see the information in your groups or to compare them to other groups, go back into advanced mode, then click on your channel name. I know this is a weird way to get to it, but hang with me. Click on groups. Click into the first group that you wanna compare. Once that group loads, you can dig into it individually or click compare in the top right. Then select another group and it'll add it to this area. From there, set the date ranges of each to whatever you want. Then click the drop down and change it to multi-metric table. Now you'll see a bunch of data that you can dig into based on what you're trying to figure out. To add even more information, click the plus icon over by the video titles and add more. And keep in mind when using this that there might be things that you need to account for depending on what you're trying to figure out. For example, if you're comparing content types and you're trying to figure out which one generates more subscribers for you, then in that particular case, if you find that one content type typically gets a lot more views, then that would be the win on the view side. But when it comes to subscribers, you would need to account for that because they're getting more views, which oftentimes will translate into more subscribers. But you 
can use this series to figure out all different types of things about your channel, figure out what types of content people are responding to most as a content set instead of just trying to figure it out per video. It's, it, it, it's just amazing. And look, if you're somebody that's trying to grow your YouTube channel faster, but you don't really know what steps to take, this video right here is going to share with you what you should be doing daily in order to make your channel grow faster. So go ahead and click into that and I'll see you over in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.